so hi everyone. Uh, it's a thrill to have you here and uh, to be speaking about such an exciting topic as how search works in Wagtail. So um, just before starting with the presentation itself, uh, let me say a few words about me. I'm well, that's my name, Aldan. Uh, I'm studying computer science in Spain, but actually I'm living right now in Paris because I'm in, ex in, a, in an exchange of studies. And, uh, well, I'm a passionate about computers and programming languages and everything. So I'm very interested, especially in AI and big data. And this is why I did a Google Summer of Code project in Wagtail specifically focusing on these things about searches. I, I worked in adapting the search backend of Postgres to MySQL and SQLite. So having said these few words, uh, let's, uh, well, just dive right into the main topic of the presentation. So uh, we'll be um, working with Wagtail, which is basically the one of the most popular CMSs that we have for Django. It's uh, inherited all of uh, the pros of uh, Django. And um, we are going to be starting from scratch here. So like we will build everything that, to illustrate how we can create our, our, custom, our custom website with our custom configuration with search capabilities. So we will have, in any in any situation, we will have mainly two ways of starting a website, uh, and uh, the first one is Wagtail start, which is just a command that lets you uh, create the structure for your website. Or you have the Wagtail bakery, which is a demo website that just comes pre-created, and uh, it's a nice option to to do development. But in this case, we'll be starting with with uh, Wagtail start, which just creates an empty structure. So what we'll do in this presentation is to first create this test website, then we'll go on to create a custom model to be able to do searches there. Uh, then we'll set up search in this custom model that we'll create. And lastly, mm, we'll take a deeper look into search, into how it works and how we, can we perform searches. So, um, Let's go right into, into the thing. And for that, I'll open my console. So um, I have already created a Postgres database. And it's very easy to do it. You can do it with Docker, for example. And um, of course, you would have to run pip install uh, Wagtail the first time that you want to do this, but I have already done it. So I can simply run Wagtail start Python web conference, for example. So right now I have created this PWC folder, which I can access. And inside of it, I have uh, three main folders, home, PWC, and search. And uh, I will start setting up my, my Postgres database in the configuration file. And that is located inside a folder that is inside PWC. So here you can see a settings folder. And if we go into the settings folder, we can see a base.py file, which will edit for adding our database. So let's go into it, settings, base.py, and here we are. Okay, so um, here we are um, with all the configuration of our website. I'll just change the engine to be a PostgreSQL engine. The name is going to be uh, Python Web Conference, PwC. The user is going to be as well, PwC. Uh, the same for the password. Password, PwC. And uh, it's going to be running in my local computer. So host, localhost. Okay, so we're ready to run Python manage.py migrate. So this is going to populate our database with everything that we need. It's pouring 
all the, the needed tables for a Wagtail installation. And right now we can test that our website is working. So for that, we'll, um, we'll run Python manage.py run server, and we'll just access a browser screen and see that it's working correctly. So I'll create a user to get into the admin uh, console. So that's the command create super user. And I'm going to create a normal user. Okay. Uh, don't use PWC as a password in production. Uh, and um, okay, so we are, sorry, I forgot to run the server. Okay, we are going to access it now. PWC, PWC. Here is the administration console of Wagtail. It's very easy to use. It's super intuitive. It doesn't, um, it, it's very minimalistic as you can see, but it's actually everything you need to, to manage your website. So uh, right now it only offers a single type of content to create. So if we click in our show page, it just enables us to create pages of type homepage. So we will now go to the second point of our presentation, which is to create a custom model. Uh, in order to do that, we can use a command that is start up. So we'll run python manage.py uh, start up and uh, we'll create a blog app just to demonstrate uh, the, the search features of a blog. So now we'll be able to see that we have a new folder that is called blog and in blog we have our models.py file which we will edit right now so let's go into blog uh, slash models.py and we will create a custom model so for that let's write class blog page which will inherit from page and uh, it will have, for example, a date, a creation date. So this is going to be a date field with a default value of date time dot date time dot now. For this, I'm going to need some imports. So import date time also from wagtail dot core dot core dot models i'm going to import my page and as well from wagtail dot um wagtail uh, sorry from this is a uh, actually imported from Django.db, so it's models.date field. So, okay, we have created a field for the date, and now we'll uh, create the body of the, of the blog page. So, for the body, we just need a string field, and this is a key feature of Walktail. If you were on, on Tuesday on the conference about Walktail, it was actually a topic that was discussed there. And uh, the stream field just enables you to do anything. We'll, we'll see how it works in, in a second, but um, it's a very nice feature. So we'll add here a stream field, which will contain, for example, an introduction. So we'll set up an intro here, which will be a char block. So just a chain of characters. And we'll also have a paragraph of content. So a paragraph of content, which will be a reach text block. Cool. So uh, now we can close our body and let's take care of the import. So from wagtail dot core dot fields import. Stream 
field and from wagtail, oh, sorry, from wagtail.core.blocks import a chart block and rich text block. Okay, rich text block. Up to this point, it's all pretty straightforward. And if I haven't forgotten about anything, we should be able to run Python manage.py make migrations. So this will change our database, our Postgres database. And uh, yeah, I forgot about something, which is uh, changing the settings file to install the app that we just created. So we have to go into the settings file. And uh, here we have the installed apps, which are mostly Wagtail specific apps and our custom apps, which is our blog app. So right now we can go on to create our migration and here it is. So um, we are going to migrate our database now. So python manage.py migrate. And right now uh, our model is already on the, on the database. However, to be able to, to change it from the from the administration console, we are going to have to add some something else here. We're going to have to add the content panels that will enable us to change um, the this model from the administration console. So we will take the page dot content panels and to those panels, which is, for example, the title of the page, we will add our custom panels. So this is going to be our uh, field panel for the date. So it's a field panel for the date and as well as stream field, field panel for the paragraph. Okay, so we're ready. Let's not forget about the imports from wagtail.admin in this case, dot, um, dot edit handlers, import field panel, and stream field panel. Okay, we're ready to run our app. So. Okay, we are here in the server once again. And uh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake there. Uh, uh, paragraph. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, it was not paragraph, it was the body that we wanted to edit. That's a mistake. Okay. Let's run the server again. And here we are. So we should now be able to add a blog page here. This is the content type that we just created. And for the title, let's just write something like my first page. Uh, this is the stream field. So as, as I was saying before, the stream field is a key concept for Wagtail because it basically enables you to add anything you want to a page, so it enables lots of flexibility. So here, for example, I can write this is my intro and I can write a paragraph with formatted text. This is the body of the web page. The has been created in Wagtail. So this way, we just created a page. It's very easy to do. And we are not going to be able to see it. However, if we try to see it, we will get an error that the template does not exist because we, we haven't defined how this 
web page should be looking, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's just as simple as the thing I've done, so, but we won't get into it because it's not very related to, to search. So it's straightforward to do it. But what we care about in this presentation, it's not so much that. So I'll just go on to create some, some other content to be able to, to test searches. Here, I'll create, for example, four pages. So I'll create a third page and a fourth page. Fourth page here and here. Okay, fourth page. And I'll go to the, the second page to change a bit the text. Mm. just to be able to, to do some queries. I'll change the date, for example, I'll say that this has been created on the third or, sorry, on the 9th of uh, March, and uh, the fourth page has been created on the 26th. Um, this is my fourth intro, and, uh, the third page has been created on the 19th, for, for example. Uh, and here I'll write beautiful. So right now we have some content to play with. And this is the time where we are going to be setting up the search. So this is the third part of our presentation to set up the search. and. Um, here, what we'll have to do is to change our model to add the search capabilities. So we are going to have to tell Wagtail to go into this um, this uh, fields that we we just defined, the date and the string field, and Wagtail is going to know uh, by by the um, lines that we are going to write right now. It's going to know that we want it to index certain fields. Um, so let's show how it works. Uh, and for that, we'll go into the model again. So we're back in this screen and um, now we'll now we'll add the the search in indexability features. and uh, for that we uh, are going to write search fields are the search fields of our regular page. So that's page.search fields plus a list of search fields that we'll define. Then in this case, it's just a, a, in this case, I'm going to do the import before. So from Wagtail dot search in port index so okay here we are okay so this is going to be an index dot search field over the body for example so we'll be able to search the body and i'll also define a thing that's going to be useful for later which will be a filter field um, and that's going to be over the date. So this is a simple configuration that we can use for doing searches. Search field, virtual field, I haven't forgotten about anything. So we can um, now run the manage.py in um, update index. This is a command that will change the internal tables of the Postgres database where the index for, for our contents, for our documents of the website is located. But just before running the command, I would like to actually see how the table looks like when it's empty. So I have an explorer of the database right here. And if we go to a table that's called Wagtail search, 
index entry, here we have um, everything that's being indexed in our website. For now, there's nothing very remarkable. We just have like the titles of the documents, which is the fourth page, the first page, the second page, and the third page. But for the body, as we had not defined anything before, everything is empty. So right now, I'll run this command. I'll write the update index command. So we'll see that the contents of this pages have been indexed. And if now update this table, we'll be able to see that the contents of the page are here. Mm, we'll explain a bit more uh, about the structure of these uh, contents, but the important thing to retain here is that the words that I wrote are kind of here. And uh, that kind of is, uh, is because of normalization, but we'll explain that later. So um, what matters to us is that right now, at this point, we have indexed our contents. So the, the content that we defined before are, is going to be searchable. And how are we going to search for that? Well, for that, I'm going to run an interactive shell. So I'm going to run Python manage.py shell. And here I have an interactive console to do testing. And uh, we'll perform some, some basic searches to see how, how, we can, um, how we can use the APIs for performing uh, searches in our content. So from blog.blog page, we can Oh, sorry, from blog.models, we can import our blog page. And right now, with this blog page, we have the set of objects that we can take a look into. So that's the fourth pages that we just defined. But if we use another different method, which is the search method, this is going to take a query that we can write, like for example, first, uh, first, and the pages that um, that match this thing. Um, uh, so right now uh, we have these uh, search results here, and we can. Keep, um, we can keep performing searches with more complicated queries. Like for example, we can search for uh, pages that contain page, uh, page, and uh, first joined by the or operator. So the or operator is going to join this search, and as we can see everything is returned because everything contains page. But if we use the and, uh, I'm sorry, I thought I had disabled that. Um, I'm sorry. Um, let me just, uh, 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 I'm very sorry for that. OK, sorry. Um, uh, so we get the results here. So we just get the first page because it's the only one that contains first and page. Then um, what else can we do here? Well, if we want to perform more complicated queries, we can actually use a different set of operators that uh, Wagtail defines for us. So I'll go to, to do some imports. So from Wagtail, dot search dot query. I'll import the and operator, for example, the or operator, and then I'll import the phrase and the plain text. Okay, so with these things, we're going to have a playground to work with, and we can work 
um, with search, uh, with uh, writing queries, like for example, and and here we we put a list of um, an or with uh, a plain text here uh, that can be page, for example. So this is going to be or um, or page plain text um, first. So this will be matched by basically any page, but at, on top of this, we will have this and, uh, here. So we can write that it has to match the second one as well. So this, this query that I've written here is the same as saying and second comma or page first. And this will return our second page. This is an example of how we can write more complicated queries, but we can also use the phrase operator that we saw just a second ago. So for example, uh, in one of the pages, we had a awesome page, I believe. No, beautiful page, beautiful page. And this way, this will only match our um, page that says beautiful page. So now we will get here all the pages that uh, match, uh, I'll write something that is not in any of them here. So here we'll get the second page or the beautiful page. And it turns out that it was at the second page. I have to check that. But uh, our beautiful, oh, I'm not running the server. Uh, okay. Well, we'll check that just afterwards. Um, anyway, here we have our query that is a bit more complicated. But I'd like to um, to go on to the last part because the time is a bit uh, a bit mm, not so extensive. So I'd like to dive a bit more into search to be able to perform a specific query that it's going to to give an unpredicted result. So let's dive a bit more into search. For, for this matter, I'd like to, well, I'd, I'd like to focus on Postgres, but just because it's, it's like the most complete implementation of full text in, in the normal uh, backends that we have for databases. But almost every backend supports full text search. So what I'm going to explain applies to, to almost all of them. So uh, what is mm, the key concept in, in the full text search for Postgres. Well, this is the TS vector. The TS vector is what's called uh, a list of lexemes, which uh, are just um, words that yeah, have been normalized. And this means uh, that we take the root of the word. So let's, let's uh, exemplify it. Uh, we have a text here about wagtail. Okay, this is an example text, and we are going to take the TS vector of this text. So to take the TS vector of this text, we are going to perform a process that is called token parsing. And uh, what this basically speaks about is that um, uh, we are going to take the original text and we are going to, to have a destyled version. And the key concept inside of token parsing is the removal of, of stop words. So like uh, words, words like the, or a, or mm, with, these kinds of words are going to be removed because they are not actually useful for searches. So this uh, key concept in, in token parsing, we are also going to mm, 
just retain the lexeme. So that's the meaning of the word. That's the most important part. The lexeme of the word is the, in English, it usually corresponds to the part of the left. So for example, um, uh, able, ability, uh, and the words of that family are going to all be reduced to able. So this is the lexeme of that family. And uh, we are going to perform this process of token parsing. So that's, as I said, uh, removing stop words and uh, taking the lexemes of the words to um, have this, this styled version that is going to be much more compact to work with and that is going to help us to perform better searches. So the token parsing takes place by um, taking our original text and dividing it into tokens, which are the words of the text. And we are going to pass each token through a series of dictionaries. And if a dictionary matches that token, then it's going to return the lexeme. For example, uh, for, for ability, there's going to be a dictionary that is going to return the word able. Uh, or there may even be the case where we have multiple lexemes, uh, or but but in general it's going to be just one lexeme. Like that's the case, for example, of synonyms or or equivalent words. Uh, we we can also get a return value of a, of a token. So that's just move on to the next dictionary, and um, we can also have an empty array. So that's what happens with uh, stop words, the word that I said before, that they are just going to be ignored. So the first of the dictionaries, it's going to be a dictionary for stop words. So they are going to be removed just at the very top layer of the dictionaries. And if a word goes through all the dictionaries and it's still not recognized, then it doesn't get added to the TS vector. So we saw before this example of a text and the TS vector that we get out of this is a TS vector like this. So we can see that the stop words have been removed. We, we are not able to find the with or the of or the is. These kinds of words are not in the TS vector. And every word has been stamped to its lexeme. Community, contribute, all of this have been cut. Also, this is important to, to note that we have some positions here that refer to where this lexeme is located in the text. So for example, active is in the seventh and the 20th word. Uh, and the same goes for each of the words in the TS vector. So this is going to be very useful to perform the searches. Uh, the second big important thing in Postgres is the TS query. So the TS query is just like a TS vector. So we have lexemes, but on top of that, we add Boolean operators to join these lexemes. So for example, I can say um, beautiful and cheap. So this TS query is going to match everything that contains both. Um, like this is, go is how we're going to perform the, our searches in Postgres. We are not going to, to get into the detail of Postgres because it is mm, something that we can just look in the documentation, but there's an operator that enables us to perform the searches. Uh, and uh, basically we just, uh, we have a query, like for example, query and for PWC and the TS query that gets, uh, that gets created is query and PWC. So we can see again, the removal of stop words and the um, lexeme of query. And uh, an important thing that I should mention here is that we usually add generalized inverted indexes to like, to the tables where we have our TS vectors. So let me show you this here in the database. Uh, this is the, as, as I commented before, this is the Wachtel search index entry table. And here we have the TS vectors of the um, indexed fields of each page. 
So as we can see, this corresponds to the syntax that we just saw with TS vectors, the positions of each of the relevant words. And um, this is done for every of the indexed pages. So on this column, on this body, we are going to create a generalized inverted, inverted index. This is actually something that Wagtail does automatically. When we run the migrations, the first time that we run the migrations when we created the website, that was when the generalized invert, inverted index was created. So this index is a bit like a B3 where we, where we uh, are able to locate the words that we want to search for just in a much faster way. Like, because if we had to perform um, sequential search, it would take ages for large websites. So this way it enables us to speed up the process a lot. Um, so I would just like to comment that um, these search features in Wagtail are out of the box enabled for Postgres, for MySQL, for SQLite and for Elasticsearch. But there's also third party modules that we can use in our installation to add capabilities for other search backends. So as I promised before, we were going to, to, to take a look into a query that was going to give us um, a strange result. So let's, let's see what it was. Um, let me write here plain text mm, or and plain text second. So right now, as we have learned, we probably can guess what will happen. Mm, we get the second page, but if I change here, like for example, page, we should get like, uh, Intuitively, we should only get mm, a page that contains or and page. But what we get is every page just because of the reason I explained before. Because when Postgres does the search, it removes these kinds of words, it removes stop words. So we actually perform the search only over page. So this is something that we should take into account. And um, uh, well, I don't have a lot of time, so so I would like to wrap things up this uh, by commenting that we can perform searches by like how are we, are we going to perform searches in our actual installations of Wagtail is that we can take the query from the from the URL from the user. And we can use a method that Wagtails provides to us to transform that into a search query that we can use to index our documents. Here, I was indexing blog page, but we could also have written uh, from wagtail.core.modules import page. And here, using page, as just as before, as I did with blog page, we would be able to search for every content. Or we can have parents of child classes in an inheritance relationship to uh, search across different content types. So it's very important as well that we keep our index updated. And for that, we can run our update index command uh, in a chronological manner every X hours, or we can set a, a trigger to update the index or a mixture of both. And, um, and as, as uh, I was saying, let's try to wrap everything up in this presentation um, to get the well the main idea of, of what I wanted to cover which is like how search works in Wagtail. So here we saw how to implement search on models. We we saw the example from before. We saw how the search is internally implemented with these tables that we looked into. We saw examples of how to perform queries 
and I forgot about a very important thing and uh, I excuse myself for that because I think that we can also do is to filter to filter pages. Um, so for example, we can say uh, that the date has to be equal to today. So that's the 2022-03-24. So the date has to be equal to today. And that's what gives us my first page only. Uh, that's important. We we saw how to how to filter queries, how to do searches, how to combine operators, how to use custom operators. We also saw how the search works in databases like Postgres, how the parsing of texts work, and how the indexing works as well. So having said all of this, I would like to thank you for your attention. And uh, if you have any questions, I have uh, two minutes to answer them, three minutes. So um, please feel free to ask anything or uh, to, to continue with the face-to-face. -face. Thank you. Thanks a lot.